discuss about tracheoesophageal fistula. So normally about uh, four during four weeks of gestation, there are two buds that are formed. One is uh, the primitive respiratory bud and primitive tracheal bud. So there is one important pathway called sonic hedgehog pathway that helps in separation of this uh, primitive respiratory bud from the primitive foregut bud. So if the if there is a inhibition of this sonic hedgehog, hedgehog pathway because of a lot of reasons, there is a failure of separation of these two buds and whenever there is a failure of separation of these two buds, there is a communication that is formed leading to tracheoesophageal fistula. Coming to the types, types of uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. So we will we'll discuss about tracheoesophageal fistula. So uh, during development, we have two primitive buds that are there. One is uh, the primitive tracheal bud and primitive foregut bud. Okay. Normally, they should separate, and this separation occurs because of sonic hedgehog pathway. This pathway is responsible for separation of this uh, primitive tracheal bud from primitive foregut bud. Suppose if there is a failure of uh, separation there is a communication that is established between tracheal and foregut bud which results in tracheoesophageal fistula. So esophageal atresia, it results from failure of recanalization of the primitive foregut bud. So this is the foregut bud, normally it should recanalize and if there is a failure of recanalization of this primitive esophageal bud, you will have esophageal atresia. So coming to the types of tracheoesophageal fistula, in the first type you will have a atretic segment in the middle of the esophagus which results in a proximal blind pouch and a distal blind pouch. Okay. Coming to the second type is also known as distal type of tracheoesophageal fistula, distal type of tracheoesophageal fistula wherein the distal atretic segment of esophagus communicates with the trachea whereas the proximal atretic segment is a blind one. Coming to the third type otherwise known as H type of fistula, only a rim of esophagus communicates to the trachea in the middle of the esophagus. Coming to the fourth type, we have, we have a central atretic segment. But both this proximal and distal segments are communicating to the trachea. The final type is, is a proximal type. The proximal type is the proximal atretic segment communicates with the trachea whereas the distal atretic segment is a blind pouch. So in entrance examination, they will ask which is the most common type of tracheal fistula. So distal type of tracheoesophageal fistula is the most common. So it is always the distal type. So wherein the proximal atretic segment is a ends as a blind pouch whereas the distal atretic segment communicates with the trachea. Uh, coming to the clinical features, so prenatally how do you diagnose esophageal atresia or tracheoesophageal fistula? Prenatally the baby or the mother will have polyhydramnios that is because because of esophageal atresia the baby will not be able to swallow the liquor and therefore leading to polyhydramnios and they will have esophageal pouch okay as you can see in this MRI image, there is a blind pouch that is there where the distal segment is atretic. This is called esophageal pouch. And dilated hypopharynx. Okay. So presence of polyhydramnios, presence of a esophageal pouch, and presence of a dilated hypopharynx are important in recognizing 
esophageal atresia or tracheoesophageal fistula okay of which esophageal pouch has higher specificity it's higher specificity whereas dilated hypopharynx has a higher sensitivity okay and one more thing suppose after delivery uh, if the pediatrician tries to put a nasogastric tube there will be a coiling of ng tube within the hypopharynx okay failure to pass an ng tube into the stomach is also one of the features of tracheoesophageal fistula or esophageal atresia so coming to the clinical features so how will an infant uh, present at birth they'll have a feeding intolerance they can have regurgitation of foods and they can present with a recurrent cough and aspiration pneumonia So, feeding intolerance and regurgitation of foods is predominantly a symptom of esophageal atresia. Suppose if there is a communication between esophagus and trachea, the food bolus can enter into the lungs and can cause recurrent cough and aspiration pneumonia. Okay. So, this is a table showing up the different clinical features of uh, developmental anomalies. If there is just an isolated atresia, so they will present with regurgitation of uh, feedings and aspiration is very less, the risk of aspiration is less. Okay, if there is an atresia and distal is tracheal is fistula, there is a regurgitation of feedings and aspiration. And if there is H type of tracheal fistula, they, they can present with recurrent pneumonia and bronchiectasis. The point to remember here is H type of tracheal fistula can present in adults also. That is the important point. Whereas the isolated atresia and distal tracheal fistula usually presents in newborn infants. Okay.